So the basic things that anybody needs is enough sleep, motion, exercise, uh, good food, water, pretty short list. Um, what the body doesn't need is poison. So if you can give the body the things it needs in the quantity that it needs to perform its functions, and you're not giving the body things to cope with that give it problems, such as medications, uh, psychiatric drugs, cigarettes, too much alcohol, you know, it's a long list. But, you know, when, 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 you, when you think about stress, most people think about relationships and people being upset with them or not having enough money or so on. But there's a lot of things that cause stress to bodies that have nothing to do with these environmental factors. If you're not getting enough rest, you're heavily stressing the body. If you don't eat enough or you eat too much, you're heavily stressing the body. If, you, uh, you know, if you're too cold or too hot, it's heavy stress on the body, you're giving the body a lot more things to cope with. And the body does a kind of a triage. You know, it, it uh, does certain things that are vital to it, and it has a whole hierarchy of things that are vital to it, and it tends to drop certain hats. Now, the body, uh, during the day, uh, deals with metabolism and coping with the environment and uh, perception. And at night, when you go to sleep, all of these things drop down and these other functions go up. Cleaning the liver, repairing tissue. Uh, growth only occurs when you're asleep. Uh, so if you never get enough sleep, the body never gets to wear those hats. Part of what the Purif does is, um, you know, if you dump too much toxins into the body and the body cannot detoxify it at the time, it says, well, I'm going to put these over here and do it later. I'm going to store this fat here and protect the body from that and uh, I'll deal with it later. But uh, in a lot, of, a lot of cases, the body never does get a chance to deal with Like a lot of backlogs, they never get done. So you have to uh, do what, do what uh, Valerie is doing and the other kind of detoxification <coughs> techniques. So as far as, as, far as nutrition, I mean, I, I've often heard, uh, when I, you know, I'm doing counseling, I'm asking, you know, well, how's your nutrition and so on, and people, people kind of complain about the fact that, that uh, everybody has a different idea, and you should you eat this, or should you eat that, and, but oftentimes it's, it's really much more of an excuse to, to not do basic things that they know they should be doing, such as getting enough sleep, staying hydrated, fresh fruits and vegetables, um, uh, you know, just, just, just the normal things, getting the body out, getting it moving around, and getting the circulation going. If you do those kind of things, um, you know, you've got most of the battle played, really. It's like Ella Wright says, it's not what you, it's not what you don't know, it's what you do know that you're not applying that gets you into trouble. So people usually know what's wrong with, with, they usually know what they're not doing that they should be doing or what they're doing that they shouldn't be doing. Um, but they're sort of uh, dug into a habit and routine and they find it hard to get off of that kind of a treadmill. But anyway, it can be done and I'll go into that a little bit, a little, a little bit more. Now, when, a, when an embryo is uh, fertilized, the first, you know, the first thing that forms is called a neural tube. And that's the first thing that's visible in an embryo. And very quickly that splits into two things. The top part becomes the brain and the nervous system, and the bottom part becomes the alimentary canal, top to bottom. It's actually the kidney. Oh, it's actually the heart first. <laughs> well, I'm saying, I'm saying something different. The brain and the kidneys. The neural, the neural tube divides 
up and whatever the sequence is, the top becomes the nervous system and the bottom becomes the alimentary canal. Now, I, you know, these, form, these are formed in certain sequences and so on, as, as Kathy was saying, but the point I was making there is just that the body has two central intelligences. You know, back, back in the early uh, chiropractic days, they used to talk about innate intelligence. And um, a lot of the holistic guys still talk about that, innate intelligence. And uh, I remember uh, getting an adjustment one time from a guy who was an early Palmer graduate. He did this thing, he called it hole in one, where he adjusted the atlas, he just put me on a, he just put me on a, a board on the side, he just went whack like that. <laughs> And, uh, you know, it was like, wow, that was kind of a shock, but it felt much better. I said, I said uh, so you don't really control what you do. You just whack it, right? And he says, yeah, that's right. He says, I, I started. The body stops it. Huh? That's innate intelligence. Yeah. Okay, I thought that was a pretty interesting demo. <laughs> <laughs> um, and two of the most important uh, aspects of uh, a body, you know, which is really the primary source of evolution of bodies, is immunity and digestion. As different plants and different food sources became um, available to bodies, mutations occurred that would more easily digest different plant plant uh, material, different types of animals, different food sources. And um, so that's where you get different blood types, because blood types uh, evolved in order to uh, better digest and to better cope with different living conditions. And, um, you know, a, an evolutionary biologist once commented that uh, evolution is really a race between the immune system and viruses. Yeah. As viruses evolve, the immune system evolved. As viruses evolve, the immune system evolved. Now, I mention this because your, your alimentary canal, 80% of your uh, immune system is in your digestive tract. And um, also, interestingly enough, 85% of your serotonin is in your digestive tract. And this is another good reason not to take these um, uh, antidepressants, because they, they interfere with your serotonin. And then people will start to get digestive problems we didn't have them before when they started taking antidepressants. But uh, this has been a sort of a big unknown, this whole digestive tract. It's really only gotten a lot of serious study in recent decades. And they just finished a big project where they analyzed um, several hundred different types of bacteria that the body has, and uh, which are essential for digestion, uh, essential for immunity, and uh, it, it's, it's quite, quite an amazing uh, ecosystem which has been screwed up a lot by antibiotics and other things which do, you know, distort that, distort those, uh, those areas there. But, you know, LRH talks about the GE. Well, there's a lot of, um, he doesn't, the main place that he talks about the GE is in this tape series called uh, the game of OT tapes. And it's uh, really quite interesting. It was 1956 and uh, made a lot of discoveries about what the GE is. It's easy to think about the GE as being the intelligence of the body, the innate intelligence of the body. That's what they're really talking about there. And, um, you know, people go into, well, is it a Thetan? Is it not a Thetan? Or what kind of Thetan? And did it used to be Tony? Or, I mean, <laughs> Those are sort of curiosities and not really key to the understanding, which is just that it's the intelligence of the body. Um, now, about ten times the number, there's communication between the brain and the, and the uh, uh, alimentary canal, but about ten times as many communications go from the gut to the brain as go from the brain to the gut. Ten times as many. And uh, there's also about a trillion cells in the body. 
there's 10 trillion bacteria in the body, in and around the body, most of which are in the alimentary canal. So this is an important thing. Um, the immune system ends up handling and coping with people have estimated two or three hundred assaults on it every day, whether it be some kind of gas you're inhaling or some sort of radiation or some sort of bacteria or virus or some sort of uh, poison in a food or something like that. But the, uh, the brain, now it's kind of shifting over the brain, which is the other part of the, the control and communication network between the state and the physical universe. So the brain, um, again, in recent years they found is like constantly making and unmaking neural connections, just like this, all the time. <coughs> And um, there used to be an old, there used to be a dispute between nurture and nature. There was a person the way he is because of his uh, DNA, because of his genetic programming. That would be nature, or that would be your, your, your science guys. And then, and then uh, your, your uh, sociology guys or psychology sort of approaches. The person's way is because of his uh, nurture, how he was raised, you know, what he's learned, those kind of things. There was this war went on for years and years. And, and really, but they're finding now that the, um, there's so much connection between the mind, the emotions, and the body uh, that it's really both. You know, the, when they did this genome project, they found all of these genes that they got turned on, they got turned off by experience and by the uh, the, the body really, in that way, was always changing. Certain things were turning on, certain things were turning off. And this was a lot of times um, influenced and formed by the experience of the body. So when, um, so when um, a person is experiencing certain things repetitively and regularly, those neural channels in the body form big pathways. When a person is um, experiencing certain emotions chronically, those pathways become very strong and very easily uh, traveled by the body. Um, when, when you're trying to learn something, the body's forming these connections. This is why when you practice something, it becomes second nature. You don't have to think about it anymore. Why don't you have to think about it anymore? Because your body knows it. Your body has learned it. And those things are held in place by the nervous system. So some people have taken this to mean, oh, well, then, and that just proves that the, there's, you know, there's no such thing as a spirit, you know, because the body does all this and is constantly changing and adapting to experience. Well, um, there was an experiment they did at uh, UCLA a few years ago. They did PET scans of uh, either these PET scans of the brain that show like cold areas and hot areas, and uh, you know. Can, show up people that are suffering from different things, you know, depression and so on. Anyway, it took two, two groups of people and did these scans. And uh, one group of people they did talk therapy on, one group of people they did uh, a drug therapy on. And what did they find? They found that both had changes in the brain, had positive changes in the brain. So you could apparently affect the brain by the body or by being, running out, discharging, communicating, relieving stress through talk therapy. And this wasn't even any kind of really effective talk therapy either. It was just people talking. Uh, so we just say, well, then okay, so then you could then you could take drugs for your your problems, or you could take, you know do therapy. Why not take drugs? Well, because drugs have all kinds of other side effects. It's not a conservative way to go. A conservative way to go is talk about your problems and get them to vanish and relieve the stress on the body, relieve the stress on your... Because, you're, because, the, because of the experiences that you have, because of the um, way you think about things, your body starts to form itself according to that. The body is not cause. You're cause. The body is an effect. That doesn't mean that your body can't create an effect on you. Anything that you can communicate with can communicate with you. 
with you. Are you upset because your body's sick, or is your body sick because you're upset? Well, it can go both ways, you know. You, 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 you can have both things going on. You, your body gets sick and you get upset. Or you get upset and your body gets sick. We know that. And uh, that's why PTS handlings work, because there's an analogy there between the confront of the body and the confront of the thing. When a per the person's gotten suppressed, their confront goes down. When the body gets suppressed, its confront can go down, which is the immune system. So your immune system is the confront of the body. And you as a being, you're, you're the confront of your own, uh, you know, spiritual self. So kind of when you go effect, the body goes effect. So when you relieve that effect point and go back to a cause point, the immune system comes back. See, so. You know, it's just, uh, L. Wright goes over this in, uh, you know, physically old PCs and pre OTs. He says it's not all spiritual, it's not all physical. We're not extremists, you know. You've got spiritual problems, mental, emotional problems, and physical problems. They're all interrelated. But the senior problems are your, be are your problems as a being, or your, you know, your case, your mind, how you think, your emotions. Because um, if you're getting constantly stimulated into fear, um, well, you know, you're gonna, your adrenal glands are going to be squirting out adrenaline all the time. <laughs> and uh, that goes on for a while. You eventually, you know, exhaust. And then, you, you know, you've got uh, chronic fatigue and things like that. Anyway, the important point there is that the, uh, you know, relieving traumatic memories. Well, here's another interesting point. You know, I read this, I read this uh, extensive account in, in Time Magazine about how the mind works and how memory works. And they track these things, you know. And with, with all the, there was almost an exact correlation between how Dianetics works. Um, and, uh, but because if, if, if uh, experience is too uh, intense. The body doesn't store it in this part of the brain, it stores it in this part of the brain. But this part of the brain doesn't really download it to any other area for like three days or whatever. Um, and if, if uh, an experience is too traumatic, there's too much stress hormones being delivered into the body, uh, these memories aren't, aren't recorded in the, in, the, in the adrenal cortex, in the same part of your mind, supposedly. Anyway, it's a whole metaphor. It's almost the same. It's almost identical to Dianetics. You read it and you think, wow, they're really talking about Dianetics if you change the words. But again, does that mean that there, it's just mind and there's no, it's just brain and there's no fate? Well, not at all. Not at all. It just means that the mind organizes itself around experience. And when you change the being's memory of experience or discharge harmful energy out of experience, the brain changes, the body changes. So the lesson in all that is really, is, well, yeah, you have to, you have to handle the body. You have to treat it well. You have to do for it what it needs. Um, but you, have, but you have to handle your case. You, know, you, you can't do it one leg of the triangle, you know, spirit, mind, and body. Uh, and, you know, uh, in my practice, I've had a lot of experience with uh, working with other holistic uh, practitioners. Uh, I had about six or seven that, that I worked with pretty consistently where they would send me people who had car accidents or who were depressed or turbulated and sick and uh, or just run down. And uh, I would handle them emotionally and spiritually, and they would handle them chiropractically and nutritionally. And we got some very, very good results between handling all parts of the problem. It worked out great. Uh, knowledge, responsibility, and control. 
Now, responsibility has a lot to do with what condition you're in in relationship to the body. A power condition or a high condition would be a high level of responsibility. So it's kind of like the subject uh, is being responsible for a body. Now, when you say that, people think of their own body, but uh, you know, what about when you were a kid? You wanted a you wanted a pet dog, you know, and you said, "Oh yeah, I'll take care of it. I'll feed it. I'll walk it. I'll clean up after it." And you know, who ended up taking care of it? Your mom, you know. <laughs> so, so you were you were not responsible for a body, and um, being responsible for your own body really has to do with the. Uh, you know, applying the conditions. You know, the bottom, the bottom three conditions all have to do with beingness. You know, find out where you are, find out that you are, find out who you really are. Well, you know, where you are in, in relationship to the body, it's important to have an independent position in relationship to the body. Best to manage the body from a point that's independent of the body, not in the body or being the body. It's like driving a car with a steering wheel up like that. It's hard to do. <laughs> Uh, uh, that you are, that you exist, that you are a spiritual being who basically is see you to and uh, able to control a body, that's finding out that you are, and who you really are, well you're the one in charge, you're the one that's supposed to keep things on track, keep things going well. You know, and, and then uh, in doubt, um, well, what is a person's doubt about their body? You know, it's kind of like, you can go into a doubt in different things, you know, do, do you really want this body? Do you really, do you really think it's important to take care of it? You know, you can go into doubt on those things, which is just, you have to come up, come up through that to where you have confidence and certainty in your own ability to maintain ARC and KRC for your own body. And then you can confront the liabilities there now, truthfully, you know, yes, sometimes the body is a liability to you, uh, but more often you're more of a liability to the body, in that, uh, you know, a lot of the chronic problems of the body are really self-generated. Not always, but a lot of times. Um, I remember being down in Clearwater going to the early bird special at the, uh, at the restaurant. There was a whole long line of elderly people uh, waiting for the restaurant to open, and uh, and I went, wow, the the nutritional sins of a lifetime, right there. <laughs> so, you know, like with uh, with anything, it's not necessarily what you do once in a while; it's what you do in every day that really is a problem. But liability has has to do with trust and confidence and faith, you know person who's in liability is taking on the color of an enemy because uh, they're doing or continuing to do something that's against, against the best interests of the group. So, you know, if you uh, have a habit or routine that's uh, non-survival, you're kind of a liability to the body. You know, at least your body thinks so. If you're ever away and your bodies get together with other bodies, you should hear what they say about you. <laughs>